The Maldives are so beautiful. In this video, I'm giving you some helpful travel tips if you're considering spending a little bit or a lot of time in Male. So let's dive in. Male is actually really, really small really, really dense. In other words, it's this size, but has this population. And so you'll see things like people getting around on scooters, etc., because space is pretty tight on the island. So you'll find in Male a lot of affordable hotels, anywhere from $50 to $200 a night versus staying at some of the amazing resorts that are out here, which the one that's right behind my shoulder is $3,000 a night. Uh, also very nice, by the way. I spent 24 hours in Male and specifically Hulu Male, which is a man-made island actually. And I stayed at the Sea Salter Inn, which was a totally great hotel. I was comfortable and had all the things that I needed. And was only a 15 minute ride from the airport. And I know you guys like to ask how much you paid. So I paid $120 in total with taxes and fees for my stay at the Sea Salter. And let's talk about getting in because this will be helpful. The airport is, it's not that small and it's not that big either. When you enter, there's a large welcome area where a lot of the resorts are picking up their guests and taking them off to wherever the resort is located. So you'll see seaplane transfers, domestic transfers, as well as the boat taxis and regular taxis. And it's actually quite civilized. And what I mean by that, I don't know, tell me in the comments below if this has ever happened to you where you land in a foreign country and everybody's all over you at the airport trying to get you to get into their taxi. It's not like that. They have posted set prices for taxis, a taxi line outside, and I was able to pay a $10 taxi ride from Male Airport to Hulu Male, which was about a 15 minute ride. So the price is normally six to $7, and then they just charge extra if you have luggage, and I had a lot of luggage. By the way, yo, if you're new here, I'm Christine, and this is Where in the World is CL, and I make travel videos every week till we get up, get in and travel. So if you'd like to travel, consider subscribing. Okay, all right. Let's talk about the weather. It's generally really, really sunny here, but there tends to be more rain April through October and monsoons June to November. And so I would say for me, we got a lot of sunny days, but we got plenty of rain and plenty of rough seas while I've been out here. I'm here at the beginning of November, 2021. Okay, all right. It's helpful to know that this is a Muslim country. So if you are a woman, consider bringing something to cover your shoulders and your knees and don't flaunt that bikini until you are out at your resorts, etc. And same thing with alcohol, actually. It's illegal to bring alcohol into the country and they do not serve alcohol anywhere in Malay. Totally different story at the resorts, but don't expect that glass of wine when you're eating in Malay. Which, speaking of which, meals are totally affordable. I ate around Hulu Malay a little bit and typically meals were 10 to $20. By the way, if you have helpful tips, add them in the comments below because we're all a community here and I'm just sharing all the research that I did. So if you have an extra tip, drop it in the comments below. And also tell me, when are you going to the Maldives? I'd love to know. Okay, all right. This is the poor woman that has had to share a room with me <laughs> for the last two weeks. Oh, you're a lovely roommate. There's a very nice place called the Coffee Club. Coffee and Club. Sea house that's by the coast, so you get an ocean view. Oh, I like that. Yeah, Speaking of ocean views, so yeah. I'm learning that all the beaches in Malé are man-made. Is that right? Yes, unfortunately. But where, oh. which one is your favorite of the ones that they do have? Neither. By your standards. <laughs> yeah, by, by Maldivian island standards, it's pretty <laughs> compared to... <laughs> I mean, Malé is a very chaotic city, so the beaches are an okay place, but it can be very crowded in the evenings. And there's a very nice park next to our official artificial beach near the bridge called Gordoziara Park. It's a very nice walk. Like it's not huge, but it's very green. Okay, okay. And one thing that was helpful was I could actually pay in US dollars. So they accept US dollars or you can exchange for their local currency, but it was totally fine using a credit card or US dollars to pay. 
The other thing is everybody speaks English, so it wasn't a difficult thing to get around and communicate with people, so that was really, really easy. The other thing to note is they use a three pin G plug. Basically looks like this, and that's the type of plug that will help you to stay connected. And speaking of staying connected, if you're a tourist, they have tourist SIM cards, and so I picked up one of those at the store. Super easy, cost me this much and gave me this much data. And I would say for the most part, as I've been out adventuring these seas, I have been able to be pretty connected. Obviously, the closer you are to islands that have the resorts on them, <laughs> the better, but generally speaking, I've been fairly connected out here. Y'all know I like to keep it 100. So I would say the thing about Male is I understand why so many people just use it as a jumping off point to go somewhere else. It's kind of a busy island that doesn't have those beautiful, beautiful beaches. You can go hang out and enjoy and have a drink at a beach club, etc. So a lot of people generally use it as a jumping off point. So just being honest, it was awesome to stay there, but it was a great place to rest my head before going on this adventure. I'd love for you to join me. Check out the playlist in the description below for some crazy scuba diving and manta ray expedition stories, and I'll see you in that adventure. Ciao.